This is 4.5, which is proving trig identities. Now, this is advanced functions identities we're talking about, not grade 11 identities anymore. Even though there's a lot of similarities, these ones are obviously going to be a little bit tougher. So if you need to, check out a couple of my videos on grade 11 trig identities. It'll help you build up your skills before you tackle these questions. Okay, so in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is go over a warm-up, a couple of examples, and then I'm going to do a separate video on 4.5's something called counterexamples. All right, so let's get started. The warm-up is going to be on some grade 10 and grade 11 skills. So for example, grade 10 skills, factoring a difference of squares. So it's going to be a difference of perfect squares. Remember that you put them into two brackets, one with a plus and one with a minus, and you square root the front, that's how you get these two a's, then you square root the back and that's how you get these two b's. Okay, so this one is also a difference of perfect squares, and then you're just going to factor into the positive and negative, and again square rooting the fronts and square rooting the backs. But this one has another difference of squares that I can break down. So if you ever could factor further, factor further. This guy can't really factor further because it's not a difference of squares, and therefore we just leave it alone. Okay, now something like this, a grade 11 example. If we can simplify, we should simplify. So the twos look like they could probably reduce. And you know what, I have one cos on the top and two on the bottom. So why don't we get rid of one cos, leaving one left over on the bottom. Okay, so the numerator is going to be a sine and the denominator is going to be a cos. That can actually be rewritten as tan x. So these are all skills that will help you out with any of these tricky trig identities. Okay, so some suggestions. First of all, in grade 11, it's pretty much the same where we actually change everything to sines and coses. So those are the main building blocks. Anytime you see a tan or any uh, reciprocal trig functions, you want to immediately change them into sines and coses. Okay, now something that's going to be different is the fact that we have more formulas now. So we have compound formulas, we have double angle formulas, and you're going to need to be able to recognize those so that you can use them in your proofs. We always still tackle the most complicated side first, just to simplify it a little, and then hopefully it'll look like the other side. Sometimes you might actually have to factor, so that's why we were doing it a little bit in the warm-up. We just wanted to practice a bit. Okay, um, also if you have any fractions, you want a common denominator. Okay, now expect to make some mistakes, don't give up, it's all about perseverance, and you know what, once you solve that trig identity after you've persevered, you're going to feel pretty damn good. Okay, so here are all the trig identities, some of them you know and some of them are new. So these three are from grade 11, okay, and these three are from grade 12. Now, I don't really see this one a lot in terms of trig identities. I usually see these ones. Now, how do you actually recognize the compound angle formulas? Anytime you see, say, cos, sine, or tan of x plus y or x minus y, I want you to immediately change it into what it equals to, and vice versa. Now, the double angles, you normally see in a trig identity, again, if you um, take a look, notice that it says 2x. So as soon as you see something that says 2x, you know right away it's a double angle and you might want to change it into what it equals to. Also, if you recognize this side, you might want to change it back. It really just depends on what you're looking for in order to make it look like the other side. So let's get into some examples. I think I'm going to go over three. The first one looks like this. Okay, so prove each identity. Um, we're going to start with A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write them into my left side and my right side. This equal sign is where the line is. I don't want you to write an equal sign because you have not yet proven that the left side equals the right side. So you know what? Just work on each side separately. That means that equal signs will go along the sides as if you were just simplifying each side. Hopefully, at the end, your left side will equal your right side, and if it doesn't, it means you did something wrong. So I'm thinking, you know what, the left side looks pretty good. I'm going to start working on the right side, because I'm noticing that, you know what, these two look like compound angle formulas. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change them into what they are equivalent to. So this first part is the um, addition 
cos compound angle formula and it actually equals to cos x cos y minus sine x sine y plus so I got my plus right there this one I recognized as a compound cos subtraction formula and this is what it equals to now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the brackets and since there is a plus nothing really happens like nothing changes so I've rewritten this entire thing right down here and then I've rewritten this entire thing right down here Okay, so no symbols have changed, and then I'm just going to simplify. So it looks like since I have a negative sine x sine y and a positive sine x sine y, they probably cancel out to make zero. But then I have these cos x cos y's, and I'm going to add them, which means that overall I get 2 cos x cos y. Now that looks exactly like the left side, and we always want to end off with a left side equals right side. Don't forget to actually write this. Because, I mean, wasn't that the entire point of this example? We were supposed to prove that the left side equals the right side. So we should say it. Okay, so let's try another example. All right, so b cos to the power of 4x minus sine to the power of 4x is equal to cos 2x. So I'm recognizing that there might be some double angle formulas in here. Maybe, I mean, this kind of looks like a difference of squares, just like our example 1b. Um, sorry, in our warm-up. There we go. Okay, so why don't we start off left side equals right side. Okay, and uh, don't put the equal sign here. Sorry, my bad. We actually have to say that at the very end when we actually prove it. Okay, so what I did was I did the difference of squares and I broke it down into a positive and a negative bracket. I square rooted the front and I square rooted the back. Okay, and again, the front and back are the same over here. Okay, now I'm also noticing that this guy is one of the double angle formulas, so I just put that right over here. And uh, you know what? I wrote it right up here so that you could see it. Now I'm also noticing that this one is the Pythagorean identity, where we can actually substitute it and make it 1. So sine squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1, and I just wanted to change that to a 1, because now, take a look. Don't they match? Like I said, I mean, some people will see these things right away and some people won't. It really takes intuition. I've been doing this for a really long time and you guys haven't. So, I mean, obviously I'm going to see certain things that you might not see and it just takes practice. You can't really teach intuition. It's just something that you, you get with experience. Okay, so here's the last example. Now, this is going to be a big example because it looks like each side is quite long. So you know what, I'm just going to work on the left side of the example first and I don't know, maybe it could look like the right side. I want to look, sorry, I want to actually work on the side because I'm noticing that this is a compound angle formula and this is also a compound angle formula. So why don't we just write that down right now. Here's a compound angle formula for the addition and here is the compound angle formula for the subtraction. Now this kind of looks like a difference of squares. I mean, isn't this your a minus b, a plus b? So I'm just going to write it again as a squared minus b squared. Again, there's that intuition thing. Let's just say that you didn't have the intuition that you knew that this was a difference of squares. Couldn't you just do FOIL? Okay, FOIL is just a distributive law. So take this guy times this guy and you're going to get the cos squared cos squared and then you're going to get this one times this one and when you add that with this one times this one they actually cancel out so you had the very last one which is sine xy times sine xy and you get the sine squared x sine squared y all right so it's starting to look a little bit like the right hand side because I got some cos squares in there but there aren't any signs so my next step is again intuition I'm just gonna change those to coses using the Pythagorean identity this is gonna be changed to 1 minus cos squared and this is gonna be changed to 1 minus cos squared okay so now they're all coses and I'm pretty happy but again I want it to look like the right side so I'm gonna continue working on it I'm just gonna do foil over here a little bit so I get the 1, I got a minus cos squared y, a minus cos squared x, and a positive cos squared x cos squared y. So this is just FOIL again, or distributive law. 
And once we take off those brackets, this negative is going to change all the symbols that are in here to the opposite. So there I got that negative 1. I got a positive cos squared y. I got a positive cos squared x and a negative cos squared x cos squared y. Now this one seems to have canceled out with the negative 1. And notice that whatever is that's left over is actually very similar to the right hand side. Oops. See? Okay, so at the very end, again, left side equals right side. Now what I have here in the last couple of slides is any extras. You can pause the video if you want to try them out. I got some extras over here as well. So lots of fun and uh, good luck.